he was a racist serial killer and he they estimate he killed somewhere in 23 24 people in the midwest i really believed i was looking at evil i was really i believed at that moment um, uh, that I was talking, the devil was working through this man. Joseph Paul Franklin's a horrible individual, was. Thank God he's got executed by the state of Missouri. But he was traveling throughout the Midwest and he um, came to Cincinnati. He was robbing banks to support himself, but he came to Cincinnati and sat on this railroad trestle uh, looking for an interracial couple. And he sat there a long time, you know, almost three or four or five hours. And finally, two young black kids were walking from their grandmother's house to a convenience store to get some Cokes or some, something, Pops or something like that. And, um, and he shot, shot and killed both of them from the railroad trestle. He was looking for mixed, mixed race couples. And uh, he waited for a couple hours and didn't see any. So in, in his words, it was, oh, Oh, what the hell, you know, I'll pop these two young boys who were going to get ice cream uh, up around Tennessee Avenue. Just a bad man. He would never admit to Cincinnati he was confessing to a lot of murders. And um, he was talking to a local reporter here in town, Debbie Dixon. And I finally said to Debbie, would he talk to one of us? And Debbie said that he would never talk to man, men. He hates men. But if you have an attractive assistant prosecutor, he'd probably talk to her. Um, well, at first I thought I was going to be um, the lawyer, the trial attorney um, on the team that was going to prosecute Joseph Paul Franklin. And um, uh, it's nothing that Joe said. It was my interpretation of, of being told about the case. And then in the second, the, the big meeting with all the partners there and the, the police department and various people from the prosecutor's office is when I realized that I was being asked to be part of the team to uh, interview Joseph Paul Franklin. So then I realized my role is not as a, a attorney, it's going to be as a witness. Melissa fit the bill and uh, she was very uh, eloquent. She was very, everything you want in a questioner. She was sharp. Uh, she would ask the right questions. We just thought she would be the perfect fit. Um, Joe really had um, this strong desire to bring peace and closure hopefully to the families of the victims. Since it was a sniper style shooting, no um, DNA, no forensics, um, and they really, all they had was that they could place him in Cincinnati, but they, could, they needed a confession. That was the only way that they were gonna be able to convict him and help hold him accountable for the two murders here. Uh, Missy and Mark Pete Meyer, one of my investigators, went to Missouri, where he was on death row, by the way, for another couple murders. And um, they went out there, and Mark called me and said he just confessed to Cincinnati. I said, why did you shoot the two boys? And he says, well, it was, I wanted the interracial couple. That was, that's what he wanted and uh, he got tired of waiting. So he was indicted. The boy's mothers came down to our office and we told them that we finally know for sure, we always suspected it, but we finally knew for sure that 
Joseph Paul Franklin had shot their boys. We tried the case. Uh, he was found guilty. Judge Winkler sentenced him to life in prison. And then we shipped him back to Missouri where ultimately he was executed. He's the kind of guy that judges uh, think about getting off the bench and punching him in the mouth. You know, I had a duty to do. I did my duty. It caused me some problems afterwards emotionally um, and during, where, but at the same time, um, it was all worth it. We're here to serve, and that's what we did. I can't imagine what it's like to have your little boy killed, shot in such a violent fashion because of the color of his skin. I'm just glad he's gone.